Hey, this is H from Emerald Promotions here on the day of obituary in the village, and you're listening to What's Metal. So, okay, so it's time to introduce yourself and, um, well, Emerald Promotions. What is, is it all about? It's all about bringing metal to Ireland, basically. There's no, uh, it's as simple as that, really. Just no bands were playing here, so back in 99, or a little before, we just decided, hell, let's give it a go, and it's developed into this, and this is kind of the biggest day we've ever had to be getting obituary over here, so this is a... Uh, this is kind of the pinnacle of everything we've done so far, I think, anyway. It's, uh, it's the legends are back, as they say. It's going to be killer. So, well, uh, you personally are a lot into death metal, and that's also the schedule of Emerald Promotions. So are, are you also interested in doing other things like death metal? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, everyone kind of gets at me about that, that everything's death metal. But, yeah, that, that is my favorite stuff. But I also I love stuff like Nevermore and all that kind of stuff as well. And we actually had them booked for... August, they were going to do some dates leading up to Wacken, but they got pulled. But um, it just happens that the death metal bands tend to tour more and certainly do UK dates more. And we generally need bands to be doing a UK to tour to get them over here. Today is actually an exception to that, but normally that's the way we work because they'll just come over on the ferry on the, you know, with the bus. So it does work out mostly death metal. I don't know really why, simply because. They seem to tour more, and no matter what people say, they do sell the most over here. It's, uh, I think, anyway. So that's, yeah, but yeah, it's, death metal is the priority. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> okay, so what is the usual workflow um, to get a band booked or to get a gig st uh, sorted? Well, it started, I mean, if you take today as an example, that just started with an email from a guy in the UK who was organizing some of the, the UK leg of this. And he just sent a mail through that had been forwarded by the main agent just saying, you know, obituary, the legends are back to our dates available. So I got back to him and he actually, his album was going away. So I got back onto the main European agent, Brookstein Records. And I just told him, look, we really want to do an Irish date on this. Um, and he said, all right, great, because with it being this kind of comeback tour, they wanted to get as many countries in as possible. So basically we just spoke on the phone that night and really thrashed out a deal almost there. And then it was agreed kind of within... 48 hours of the whole thing actually the first time i saw about it so once it's all booked then really the main thing is to get venue booked get tickets printed posters out just get the promotion machine rolling as they say and that's really the main thing i mean then as it gets nearer there's a lot of things to do obviously like things like work permits um you know for this there was a lot more there was flights minibus to arrange ordinarily if they come over on the bus there's not so much but with this we had to hire backline and everything Mainly, though, it's things like work permits and just sorting out a lot of stuff with the venue times and then obviously sorting out catering and just all the little bits that people never think you have to do. You know, I mean, you have to get a work, a work permit for a band to come in to play one date if they're not EU, which is it's nuts. You know, they're the kind of little things that you never realize you have to do until you end up having to do it. So that's about it, really. Kind of most of the other ones we do generally get offered straight from our normal agents, something like Cannibal Corpse and that. This was this one was a bit different. Ordinarily, it purely comes through in an email with a specific date offered and a fee offered. And it's like, basically, do you want the date? And normally it's yes, because you just can't turn down metal. <laughs> so, uh, and, and then it's pretty much the same from then on in. It's just get the word out and get, you know, just little things like get billboard space book, get the venue book, tickets printed, billboards printed, sent to the billboard place to put them up, all that kind of stuff. So it's... Uh, it's pretty much a, it's pretty much the same thing every gig. So once you get in a routine of it, it's it's okay, you know. So how much time do you spend on average to organize one show? Uh, well, on our, it's hard to quantify in terms of hours. I mean, I do a full time job Monday to Friday, so it can be tough. I spend a lot of my evenings kind of online and, you know, dealing with people, emails, and then just I do pretty much do everything. Kind of, it's pretty much you know. Print, get designed the tickets, design the posters, all that kind of stuff. Even do the website. So, like even updating the website can take a bit of time. And I don't know how much time exactly, but it, I know it takes up a lot of my time. But it's great, so I don't mind. What do you think is the most effective way to promote a show? Is it internet? Are, uh, well, are these flyers or posters? What is the best thing to get the people in? Well, it kind of depends. I mean, flyers and the internet, and you know metalireland.com the forum and obviously our own website that are quite powerful in themselves but they tend to only get through to the people in the scene who'd be checking that those type of things out same with flyers only people who are at other gigs will get those 
the most effective way of getting word of the gig through to kind of maybe older people who aren't so involved in the scene anymore is billboards around the city. I mean, they, they would play a big part in something like obituary because, you know, you'd have a lot of older people who into obituary back in the day and have perhaps drifted out of the scene, but they'd see obituary or playing and be like, you know, obviously want to go. So I think it depends. If it's it's a very underground gig, then it's your standard kind of posters in the sound cellar, internet forums, flyers, etc. But for something like this where you're perhaps crossing out of the real underground scene, I think billboards are huge just to get it across, you know. Also, people in Germany uh, will not know that it's not allowed here in Ireland to get people inside that are below 18. So, so what what is this rule exactly about? So, um, where do they differentiate between underage gigs and 18 gigs? Yeah, well, there's no difference really. Before, there used to be a thing where you know you could have a balcony reserved and you could let under 18s up there, but the laws were changed by the government, so pretty much there's no uh, there's no underage gigs anymore unless you do like an afternoon show at no bar. But then there's a lot of the older people won't bother with that. So it sucks. It's it's pretty much every gig is over 18s now. Whereas before you used to be able to get in under 18 if you're accompanied by an adult, but not anymore. So I don't know if it's such a big thing for something like Obituary. But if you take a band like The Haunted, for example, last time we had them over, it was packed on a Monday night, but you could see a lot of them were under 18. Since then, it's changed. So I'd be interested to see, for example, next time we do The Haunted, if we do whatever... If, the difference because i think bands like that that cross over more to the i don't know crying kids whatever you want to call them i think you could hit gigs like that more so than something like obituary but it's it's a pain so are there problems here in ireland to organize a show uh, that you won't have maybe in on mainland uh, europe is there any anything that is maybe connected with being on an island here that is maybe more more problematic big time i mean the, the, the being on an island is the biggest pain because i mean we pay a lot more for a show than say the regional promoters in the uk and the reason for that is because of the ferry crossing it costs i mean to bring a nightliner bus with the trailer which they normally have with the back line in it to bring one of those across on the ferry return pretty much costs a thousand euros you know it's a lot of money and obviously the band or the agent or whatever he can't charge you the standard fee and have a thousand euros coming out of that fee that he wouldn't have coming out of a fee for a mainland date if you want to call it that so we generally have to pay the fee that a regional UK promoter is paying plus the ferry. So it's a big problem and that's why our tickets are a little bit more than if you look at the UK dates. But it's as low as we can keep them. I mean, we have to cover ourselves naturally. So the only way to cover such extra costs is to add a couple of euros onto the tickets. But uh, I like to think they're still reasonably priced, you know. So that's the biggest problem is the ferry. I mean, there's a lot more gigs we could do if we didn't have that because we could do the gig and break even at the base price but when you're adding another thousand euros onto the ferry we can't be sure we'll make our money back so we have to turn certain things down so a lot of the gigs we bring over here have to be almost guarantees for us to be able to do them you know cannibal corpse etc so that's it okay fine um so despite all that um work and all the hassles that you have with the shows what is the positive aspect of it all so where do you have the most fun uh, what makes you feel happy and content uh, well the time when the band comes if the headline and band comes on stage basically i mean I, i love the whole day of the gig you know i mean it's today has been fun like everything's been cool and they're all nice guys and stuff so well at 9 45 when obituary come on stage that's when all the work comes together and you know You've made it work and everything's there. The place is hopefully packed and stand on the balcony looking down at a packed venue with obituary on stage. Then you get a get a shiver down the spine when that happens. So that's that's the best moment. I mean, that's when it feels, hell yeah, that's that's when you know it's worth it, you know. There's a lot of pride involved when you know you've made it happen, you know. So what would be the thing that would break Emerald's neck? So if a band pulls out of a tour, maybe, or um, a, a concert does not take place, you might lose money. So what is the thing that would really make an end to all of this? Uh, well, there's a couple of things could finish. Obviously, a huge, huge loss could finish us because we love doing it. But at the end of the day, we can't have it affect in our own personal money. You know, we have to run it like a business separate from our own income. I mean, naturally. Because, but um, So that would be the main thing that could finish it. Other than that, I suppose... Other than that, I'm not really sure. Getting old, maybe, I don't know, but that's not going to happen for a long time. So uh, I don't see it finishing it for a long time. As long as the enthusiasm's still there, I, I, I never want to stop doing it. It's, 
to be involved with all these bands after listening for, to them for so long is just amazing, you know. So that's uh, I can't see anything in the near future stopping it. Not if I have my way, anyway. <laughs> So our show is, show is called What's Metal? So what is metal for you? Is it a kind of music? Is it a form of lifestyle for you even? Uh, it's first and foremost, it's the music, you know. Obviously, there is a lifestyle attached to it, but I think uh, it's mainly all about the music, you know. Uh, for me, anyway, I've, yeah, you don't have to go to metal bars every weekend or whatever to be metal as far as I'm concerned. I, I get bored going to the same places all the time. It's about really being into the music and not... It's about walking the walk and not talking the talk. You know, saying you'll go to gigs, say you're buying an album, but not buying. It's about, you know, it's about maybe sacrificing a night in the pub to get tickets for a couple of gigs. It's what's more important to you, you know, beer or seeing the bands you listen to. That's what it's about for me. The music, 100%. Simple as that.